Hi guys, welcome back to Dana Danny. So apparently Shani's son, William, did a video. There's no, um, there's no picture. It's just strictly sound, but uh, I figured I would jump on and cover this real quick for you guys. So let's get started. Uh, tell me when that begins. It's, it's on. Okay. All right. So this is Will, you know, Shannon's son. And I want to talk about a few things regarding, you know, all of the rumors going around recently. Um, first of all, I just want to make this clear. Like, my, mom and dad, both of them, they did their best. Like, you guys gotta understand that they're both not in a good state. Like, dad, he is in a very bad mental state, and he's not able to, you know, take care of us properly because, you know, he can't get a job as, like, his mental issues, you know, it causes him to get in a state where, like, he'd be, this is according to him, like, he'd be a danger to other employees. But, you know, he's trying to get help for that, and, yeah, um, with mom, like, you, you guys already know, she's in a very bad physical state, and she's literally not able to walk at all. Okay, I'm going to stop there. God love him. Um, he really is trying to defend his mom and Rev. Uh, kind of surprises me that they call Rev dad. Um, but so in this video, he really tries to defend them. So I just wonder how much talking there was before they hit the record button. You know, um, how much of that was prodded for him to speak on. Uh, it does. He does sound um, well spoken, you guys. He's, he sounds, you know, well. So and he does say that they're doing well. So apparently, you know, their foster home is working out maybe he you know maybe he's glad to be there and if it takes them believing that it's rev's illness or Sh uh, shani's illness that they can't take care of them who really cares what it is that you know they think is the t determining factor as long as they are out of that house and they are in a safe environment where they can thrive and learn and be deprogrammed actually so yeah like both of them they've been trying their best to work with what they had but it was becoming kind of clear that they weren't able to take care of us anymore because the financial situation and all that, it just wasn't good. Like, okay, I'm going to start with the starving rumor that G-Man was throwing around. I I don't really know the exact details of it, but G-Man, like, you really got to stop because this is not okay. This is outright just... Ron, because, okay, what he's saying is he's saying that they intentionally starved me and my brother. They did not. In fact, both dad and mom tried their absolute best to get food in any way they could. Like, there were many moments where we didn't have much food, but there was always some kind of food in the house. And, you know, whenever, like, we started to run out, they looked around for some way to get more food. Like, they asked CPS or they asked G-Man for help. Okay. So whenever they were out of food or low on food, Shani and Rev would do whatever they could to get food in the house. Again, God love him. You know, um, he's been brainwashed his whole life into thinking that this is all the way it really is. In reality, Shani and Rev did nothing when they were out of food, but reach out and ask for handouts. Um, that was a quick fix. That was a temporary fix. And it was not something that was going to sustain the family long term. So <laughs> I love that he's, you know, trying to defend his mom and Rev, but... Again, I really feel like it goes back to like brainwashing because the way those poor children lived, the conditions in which they lived, and the neglect as far as Shani teaching them how to take care of themselves and keep themselves clean and use the restroom and, you know, all of those things that as parents we do just automatically. Like, you know, you, you don't even think about teaching your kids that you have to bathe. You just do it, right? Um, you don't think about teaching your kids that you have to, you know, eat three meals a day and you just do it as a parent you just do it so every time they were out of food mom and dad did their best to get food in the house no they didn't do their best to get food in the house their best was literally reaching out for more handouts they had no problem with the fact that g-man had to work every day to support their family they weren't willing to you know lift a hand to help oh, and you know they tried um I also want to say, like, we were not being, like, abused there. Were we in a good situation? No, but that was because we didn't have any money, really. 
and they weren't, again, they weren't able to properly take care of us. So, yeah, but they did not abuse us or anything like that. Like, you know, if I'm gonna be honest, like, Daddy did blow up a few times, but, you know, that happened because he has mental issues, and I'm not gonna put that against him because it, that's not what he's really like. He always apologizes after he does something like that. He tries his best to... Okay, again, you know, him going to bat for Rev, he blew up, but he always apologizes afterwards. Okay, any of you out there that has been in an abusive relationship in the past, I wish I could tell you, raise your hands. I wish I was live so I could tell you, press one. But how many of us that have been in abusive relationships had our abusers come back and apologize to us afterwards? My hand is raised. I have my one in the chat. I mean, every single time I was abused, he apologized. He apologized while he was bawling, you know, um, and that's what sucks you in. That's what keeps you brainwashed. That's what keeps you in that situation. If you are an adult and can get out of it, this was a child. This, this child was raised thinking that these things were okay and they weren't. Be as good of a man as he can be with the issues he has. And mom, she tries her best to make money and, you know, just live life like she tried to take care of us and she showed many times that she loved us like literally she says she loves us all the time whenever we talk and i do that too it i'm gonna need a moment to think okay it doesn't surprise me that shani told them that she loved them and i'm sure a part of her does love them they're her children right i don't know how a parent could not have some sort of love for their children. So, uh, you know, I believe in a sense that she does for as as much as Shani is capable of love. I believe that, yes, she did love those boys, or does love those boys. Um, I don't think in Shani's case that it's a true mother-child love um, because Shani always comes first and most moms would always put their children first. That is not something I believe that Shani is capable of. Um, Shani is all about Shani. <laughs> um, and I don't know about the rest of you, but, you know, Jason being sick and going through... Um, you know, his, his problems and everything. I don't know about the rest of you, but for me hearing her, you know, playing, being supportive of Jason and you know, what he's going through and everything else. I don't get uh, a genuine feeling from her. I don't think she is concerned about Rev only in the, in the way that she would be concerned about Rev because she would be alone. And then she would be um, left to figure out, you know, money and where we're going to get our next meal and where we're going to get the money for our next hotel night and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Because we all know, when they're really hurting, what happens? Shani pushes Rev to come online and ask for money because I'm sure that Rev is more likely to get donations than Shani is. Um, I think people have more of a soft spot for Rev than they do Shani. That's not to say that Rev is in the right. I'm just saying that if, you know, if they're going to ask for another handout and come online and e-bag, um, I think they're probably more likely to get a better result if they have Rev do it rather than have Shani do it. Like Brain, please. <laughs> she has been trying her absolute best, and you know, she's doing whatever she can do. Like all of those streams she's making, she's doing that so you know she can make money to support herself and her family. So, Shani did make a um a remark this week about how she needs to get in a place that has decent Wi-Fi and has water so that she can get a shower and she can stream and make money to take care of her family. Uh, I'm not, I guess I don't understand. I could have sworn that Shani had been kicked off. Uh, I know she's been kicked off of YouTube more than once. Rev has been kicked off of YouTube. Um, I know that Shani is on Twitch right now, but I don't know if she has been kicked off of Twitch previously. Anyway, you look at it, I don't see how she can get monetized that on YouTube, that's definitely ban evading. What, what Rev is doing right now, I don't know if he is monetized. I know he, um, if he was, you know, never had been kicked off of YouTube, he would be eligible for monetization because he is over a thousand subs now. But I don't know, I did not check to see if he is monetized. But if he is, that could be wiped away at any moment because he's ban evading. And so he really can't be earning money from YouTube. Um, okay, let's continue. Again, things were not the best back there, but it wasn't their fault because they couldn't take care of us. They had no money. They couldn't get you do not need money to teach your children personal hygiene you do not need money to teach your child to use a toilet instead of their 
beds or their carpet or their bedroom walls. Um, some of the basics of parenting do not include money. Any jobs like mom, physically disabled, and dad, he's mentally disabled, so nobody's going to hire him. And he couldn't work even if... There are places that would hire him. Um, I don't want to mental health shame Rev. I honestly do believe that Rev has mental illness and I do, and I believe that Shani has either triggered that in him or definitely made it worse. Um, but, you know, I think that they both are abusive to one another. Uh, I don't think that Shani just abuses Rev. I think they both abuse each other and I think that the, the kids were abused, whether physically or physically, verbally, mentally, all of it. These kids were plenty, plenty old enough to know how to use the bathroom, to know how to take a shower, to know how to put clean clothes on, all of those things that we teach our children without even thinking of the fact that we're teaching it to them. Children learn what they live. So if they're not seeing Shani shower and take care of her personal hygiene, if they're not seeing Rev shower and take care of his personal hygiene, then the kids are not going to learn to do that. You know, he had that opportunity because in his mental state, he would be too stressed out. So yeah, um, I'm not really sure what else to cover, but just know like, this is to anyone watching this. We were not abused. And they tried their best to take care of us. Now, me and my brother, we're in a good place now. Things are better for us. But I, I just want to clear things up so you guys know that, like, mom and dad, they, they were trying their best. And they weren't, like, abusing us or anything. Okay, I have to say, too, I sincerely feel like... Just the fact that that's what he thinks and that's what he believes, that in itself to me is abuse. Because that is teaching your child that it is okay to treat people the way that they were treated. It's teaching your children that it, it was okay to parent them the way they were parented or not parented rather because there wasn't a whole lot of parenting going on in that house. Um, so it really, really hurts my heart for William and his brother because I think that they have many, many, many years of therapy ahead of them, of deprogramming, of learning the basics on how to live and how to take care of themselves. So yeah, that's all I have to say. Um, Mom and Dad, do you have anything you want to like comment on? No, that's all, honey. No, thank okay. you. Thank you for being so brave and strong, son. Thank you, honey. I love you both. I love you. Let me, let me turn this recording off. All right. There you have it, guys. Uh, I can't say that. Struggling. I am. Um, hold on a second here. And not knowing what to say. Okay. Uh, I, <laughs> I'm not real sure. Uh, what to make of that other than the fact that I, if that's how he really feels, if that's what he really believes, then there's so much work ahead of him and his brother, which we all knew was coming. Um, that will be it for me for right now, guys. Uh, I will see you on the next video. If you would please like and subscribe below. And I do offer memberships now. So if you are interested in becoming a member, you can hit the join button located in the description. All right, guys, thanks for joining me and I will see you next time. Bye.